Um, all right, let's go. Let's go. We we've talked about our bets. Let's talk about what we have here on the slate. Now we have some games that we didn't talk about, so we're gonna talk about those and break them down a little bit. Scotty, you have your first uh, your gotta, first I couple got a there. Teaser win, by the way. I got on the board for my You're only welcome. win last week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. the, the Steelers offense tried to not give it to me, but the defense was like, nah, we'll we'll <laughs> score a couple touchdowns and everything will be fine. Um, so with the Steelers covering, well, I had them at plus eight. They won outright. So I finally got my first teaser to hit. Because um, if that didn't, I was not going to take a teaser at all this week. But because it did, <laughs> you got it. I'm taking the teaser train. Uh I have two different ones. I got one teaser that involves a couple of favorites and one taking taking the underdogs. So start with um, I'll start with that first teaser. Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore is uh, at home against Indianapolis. I don't expect Richardson to play in this one. I don't know if that affects the line that much because, uh, you, you know, you got the Minshew mania, if not. So but either Must way. Pass taking Baltimore down to minus one and a half at home against the Indianapolis Colts. I feel like they should be able to win that game. And then you have Jacksonville in another situation uh, at home against the Texans where I feel like they should be able to, to take care of that game at home on their home field against the Texan team. That's still trying to learn with CJ Stroud. Don't get me wrong. has played pretty well, but the team itself is still Owen two and hasn't been overly competitive. So yeah. that's one. My other teaser there. New Orleans and uh, L.A. Rams. So we talked about the L.A. Uh, and Cincy game. You you move it up to eight and a half with the Rams, who I think have been playing well. I like that. Along with uh, the Saints that are playing the Packers. Listen, the Saints haven't put up a ton of points, but haven't given up a ton of points through two weeks. That on un- that totals at forty two and a half. So I, th- I fully expect that to be a one score game, regardless of who wins. So give me plus eight on New Orleans. Um, for any of you that don't know what a teaser is, it's basically the, the, the normal teaser is I'm adding or I'm basically helping my line by six points in one direction. But I have to have both of those hit in order to win the bet. If one hits and one doesn't, I lose the bet completely. It's like a parlay. Uh, for all yes. you guys who bet parlays, like, you know, like what's a parlay? <laughs> parlay is pretty, yeah. Two uh, leg, yeah. Parlay is, is two or more bets strung together, and they all have to hit for you to win. The, you can't hit one and not the other. They all have to hit, and it just m- multiplies your winnings. Now, when you tease the 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 odds or like the the winnings are kind of tailored back a little bit so you know just keep that in mind as well it's not like a normal parlay where you know it's you get the general odds that you we can get in the weeds with it but a long story short two bets strung together both, both have to hit for me to both get paid to out on those uh i already talked about bucks plus 5 in our preview but tennessee at cleveland cleveland coming off on a short week uh, losing Nick Chubb, how that looks. Tennessee, to me, just plays in close games. So Tennessee on the road, getting three and a half. This feels like a field goal game to me. Give me the points with Tennessee. I don't love Tennessee, to be honest, but I don't love Cleveland either. So in a, in a game that that totals 39 and a half, it's minuscule. Give me the three and a half with Tennessee in a game that I feel like might come down to a field goal at the end of the game. Tennessee's always in those games. They're always yeah, in those close they're always games. Close. And like they're they're <laughs> awful to watch. No one wants to watch the Titans play football, but they keep games close. That's just what Vrabel does. Yeah. And uh, on one hand, you got a quarterback that's mid. On the other hand, you got a guy that probably shouldn't a guy that shouldn't be starting at all. Yeah. It's it's just uh, I don't even know which one you're talking about for which. <laughs> Tannehill's the mid one. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Wa- Who knew? I mean, if you saw Deshaun Watson like getting outplayed by Kenny Pickett, you'd know. I mean, Tannehill's got one TD and three picks on the year, so <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not mid, but he's still an upgrade over Watson. <laughs> um, maybe. so for my picks of the week, I have I've already covered Denver Miami under forty eight and a half, and San Francisco New York Giants under forty five. 
So those uh, are, you know, go check the VOD. You could check those out as well. But um, Baltimore, minus seven and a half. Last week, I had the Buffalo Bills on the side. And I was like, this is an eight and a half point spread. The, the, the line should be at 11. Buffalo is a better team than the Raiders. They're going to bounce back. They're just top to bottom. The team that probably should win this game by double digits. I had it at 11 ish. And there's nothing different this week with this team, uh, with the Baltimore Ravens and the Indianapolis Colts, especially, especially if Gardner Minshew comes in and plays. There's this like, there's this like mystique around Gardner Minshew. Maybe it's the mustache. Maybe it's something. People think he's way better than he actually is. Like people just hype up Gardner Minshew, Minshew mania. It's like Lynn sanity, and and I just think it's like overblown. This game should be l- much like last week's Buffalo game, eight and a half to eleven is what I thought it would be. It, this is a seven and a half point spread that I think should be around eleven. And I th- we saw what happened last week with Buffalo; they blew out the Raiders. So in this one, I feel really good about this one. I just think the Buffalo Bills, um, or I mean, I, I think the Baltimore Ravens are, are are just the better team at this point. They're playing some of the better football in the National Football League. And I just the, the Colts are limited offensively with what they can do either, especially with Minshew not being able to use his legs and only use his arm. I don't know. I just think that the coaching you got to lend itself to the Baltimore Ravens as well. Take the Ravens minus seven and a half. I, I think Taiwan on is uh, right in the chat. He said, "Have you not seen that man with a mullet and wearing jorts?" This is impossible. what I'm talking about. Impossible to. Bag this it. is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is the this this is exactly my point. Is everyone just loves the mystique of of the mullet, the mustache, he, and, and you know what? I'm gonna bet against him, and I'm gonna hopefully. Yeah. Well, no. Hopefully, I'm going to cash in this weekend. Um, right. Next up, I have a teaser with the Jets and the Steelers. I didn't learn my lesson from you, Scotty, last week after taking the Steelers on a on a. Uh, well, you've kind of had won the teaser. Well, yeah. Steelers, Steelers won last week. Damn, Steelers, won right? Steelers are kind of like Jekyll and Hyde, right? With with covering uh, spreads. Well, they're one and one. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways. Um Patriots and Jets. Um New England looked decent against Philly, but they didn't show up against Miami. It's a there were two different teams. Jets defensive front should devour this Patriots offense. Like the Jets defense is no joke. They're gonna be very good. I think Brees Hall gets back on track after getting bottled up in week one against Dallas D, which is one of the best defenses in the NFL, if not the best. Um, Jets have a mini Super Bowl and trying to like this is a mini Super Bowl for the Jets coming in. They're trying to kick that 14 game losing streak to the curb to the Patriots and they're doing it at home. And I think that they have the capability to keep this game closer than it is. And the spread currently is two and a half. I do like the Jets in this one with the defense to keep it close against the Patriots offense, who, again, is is very limited ceiling wise based off of the quarterback play. Like, we just don't think that Mac Jones is the guy that is going to put up 35 points in a game by any means, especially against a good Jets defense. So I think this game is going to be a little bit closer. I have Jets plus eight and a half tease it up. On the other end, I have the Steelers. I mean, Steelers in this matchup, they face the toughest defenses in week one and two. 49ers and Browns, right? Like, they play very, very, well quality defenses let's just put it that way they have the raiders this week in a controlled environment and i feel like that is a place where the steelers can get back on track josh jacobs has one of the worst numbers before contact of any running back in the nfl he had negative two yards last week negative two is that a thing um if myers makes his return i think it's a little bit more competitive but i still think this game is close i'm leaning with taking pittsburgh in this one plus you have that defensive side with Watt and Highsmith, who were just at playing at an all-time level um, against the uh, give Raiders. TJ the defense, give TJ the Defensive Player of the Year. No one's doing that. <laughs> if they voted right now, it would be Micah Parsons. And it wouldn't be close. <laughs> it would not be close. No, I don't even know if there would be. It would probably be unanimous, frankly. Um, no disrespect to TJ Watt. Great player. But, Micah Parsons, different level. Jimmy G is going to be running for his life. Chris. And yeah. I kind of 
mentioned about EPA earlier. EPA is a uh, you know analytical stat. It's basically expected points added per play on a per play basis. The Steelers offense, you can and you can do this for rushing and passing plays. They are the worst rushing team in the NFL in EPA. And they're also that's, that's not a shock. They're also the worst passing team in EPA per in the NFL through two weeks. So it's really hard to be the worst team in the NFL at running and at passing the football. <laughs> through two weeks, the Steelers offense has done that. I'm just I'm just this is just an analytical stat I saw today. Don't get mad at me, Rack. That's just what I saw. <laughs> Uh, I know the defense played well. It certainly was opportunistic and and got some scores that they desperately needed in order to win that game on Monday night. Um, But the offense is going to have to figure some stuff out. Now, the Raiders, I mean, it's kind of, you're, do you feel, and don't take this the wrong way, but this is legitimate. Like, do you feel a little bit embarrassed that you're two and a half point dogs against the Raiders? Yeah. Are you surprised by that? Are you surprised? I mean, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that we're two and a half point dogs. That's what I think. That's what we were last week against Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I understand the offense is bad. We do need to get better. But one thing that's really weird. I don't know why we're shutting down the best edge rushers. So, like logic, we're gonna shut down Max Crosby, and then someone like Cleveland Farrell is gonna get three sacks. Hey, top five. Because this doesn't make sense. <laughs> Top five pick. <laughs> uh, oh, what was so, I about to just say? I, I got. I have, I have like a million dollars on that being one of your four picks of the week. Rack. <laughs> I do. I do have the Steelers plus two and a half. I know. I know. First, first time. I know. I, first time I picked the Steelers this season so far. In a. I, I knew you would. My bets of the. I I, I knew did, you would on this one. I didn't like it enough. Uh, I needed it. I needed the extra points. It's honestly, I, I didn't like. I didn't like many of these spreads. Like, if, if I could do like teasers and over unders, I would have done that. Sure. I don't like. The, I don't like a lot of my picks. That's why. That's well, why. The, that's why our just, pool is a uh, challenge. You could. You could just trail me. I'm seven and one. So. Yeah. So tell me, what are your picks? Uh, it's a secret. Well, I, made them. I might change them, so but I, I haven't made you. them. That's the thing. I might change yeah. mine too, depending on how lines change. But uh, yeah, so yeah. these are our, uh, these are just our Twitch Action Lab Sports bets of the week. Or uh, this is not official of our contest that we do on the side, but these are just you know four picks that we have locks for this week. So go ahead, we'll check in on these Sunday night when we do our Sunday night football stream, and we'll see how we did. And improve hopefully on last season. I feel bo- about our pick, Scotty. We're going eight now. Yeah, we're unfortunately, going. two of mine, two of mine won't be decided till Monday. But we're going, we're going eight now. We got another, another Monday doubleheader this week, Chris. Yes, sir. It's I don't crazy. know why. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's, I, I, it's I mean. Fun. It's just different. I it just Otherwise, felt, it just I mean, could more, you right? imagine? Could you imagine if this actually needed? Well, the Saints Panthers was the only Monday night game that we had to watch. That would have been miserable. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's move on. We'll shift to our fantasy focus, and this is how we're going to close out our show for tonight. Now we're going to talk talk about top rankings for each of our position groups. I didn't update the uh, highlights uh, on each of our numbers, but we'll just dive into some of the different thoughts we have on particular players. Again, if you see these players, just play the higher ranked player. Uh, if you have like a you know particular player that you're looking at, but we're gonna dive into some of the injuries that we should keep tabs on, some of the trades that took place today, and then also how that impacts your fantasy football teams. 